Good evening, lifers. You know the drill. It's 26th, and uh, it is um, different times, different times. Um, we've seen a lot happen since the last video. But thankfully to our President Trump, um, some arrests have been made for the release of the virus, and no fear here. So that's going to be tonight's theme, is no fear here. Um, before we get to where in the Bible it says that God doesn't give us a spirit of fear, I'm going to read one of the Psalms because I'm hoping that from the last episode, you guys understand that it's my hope that you guys get to take some more of the Psalms in and get to experience what God our almighty creator being supernatural daddy is trying to send home with us. So I'm going to go ahead and, and open up to the Psalms. I'm going to open to, um, in the King James version, I'm going to open up to Psalm 68. I'm going to start with uh, the first verse, and I'm only going to try to read at least um, 8 to 10 of these verses, but I want you to actually, on your own, on your own time for your own homework, is dive into Psalm 68 and quite a few of the other ones. I don't want you to just center what you're thinking and feeling about what's going on in the world, about our losses and our gains, because there are some gains. Don't get me wrong, there are. So let's think about we don't have the ability to really let fear sink into us because we don't need to have that. God didn't give us that. Psalm 68 starting from verse one. Let God arise, let his enemies be scattered. Let them also that hate him flee before him. As, a, as smoke is driven away, so drive them away. As wax melteth before fire, so let the wicked perish at the presence of God. But let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. You, yes, let them exceedingly rejoice. Sing unto God, sing praises, so his name extol him that rideth upon the heavens by the name Yuha and rejoice before him. Number five. A father of the fatherless and a judge of the widows is God in his holy invitation. God setteth the solitary in familiarized be bringeth forth out those which can bound with chains that the rebellion dwell in dry land. Number seven, O oh God, when thou wearest forth before thy people, where thou didst match through the wilderness, march through the wilderness, Selah, excuse me, the earth shook, the heavens also dropped at the presence of God. Even Scylla itself 
was moved for the presence of God, the God of the God of Israel, excuse me, some of the words in the King James Version, like names and places are uh, spelled out in a pronunciation manner. So in the King GV, it's going to be kind of tough to read them. But when you get the hang of it over a long period of time, you're going to be able to understand what the Lord himself is getting at. Number nine. Thou, O God, didst send a plentiful rain, whereby thou didst confirm those inheritance when it was watery, when it was, when it was weary, excuse me. Okay, of course. Thou, congregation, hath dwelt, therefore, thou, O God, best prepared of thy goodness for the poor. In all essence, God wants us to understand that he has revealed that he is there in times of our pain, yet his timing is nothing like ours. We want things to happen in a second. God sees things over long stretched out periods of time and therefore we get to as his chosen people learn to have his understanding through waiting through struggle through trial and tribulation through joy and suffering with that note i'm going to go ahead and as i said before i want you to turn to Second Timothy in your New Testament part of your Bible. And I want you to look at chapter 1. And I want you to go down to verse 7. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of sound mind. Be not thou therefore ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but be thou a partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. That was Second Timothy chapter 1 verses seven and eight. Right now, God is giving us an opportunity like he has before in the past many times to stop with the absolute, the, the way that we see pain through fear. We need to start seeing pain and struggle through the eyes of greatness through Jesus himself, the way that he gave himself up for us, knowing we know that we are not perfect, not in any way. We strive to be perfect, but we are not perfect. With that, St. Paul is telling Timothy and his followers, his congregation, that God himself Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, do not give us a spirit of fear. And what they went through, the trials, the tribulations, the disease, the hardships, the pain, the afflictions, the persecutions, the cruelty, the abuses. With all of that set against them, surely if they, in their time, could come out, whether here on earth or in heaven. So can we. Okay, lifers, I'm going to let you go now. Um, but I want you to truly think about that.
think about that a little bit more while you're reading the Psalms and while you're trying to figure out what God is trying to tell you. Ask the Holy Spirit to come down upon you and guide you through this. This is not an easy time for anyone, but I do know that no matter where you are in the world and what you're struggling with, whether it's this virus, whether it's a loss due to this virus, whether it's a loss due to something else, much more heinous even, I want you to look at the Bible first. I want you to look at what God has in truth been telling us for centuries, for millennia. I don't want you to necessarily just listen to me. I want you to really, truly first listen to the Lord. I love you guys. Take it easy and no fear here and not there either. Not with you. Hugs.